Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I don't think I've turned them on. Tower Gardens and then some other things for STEM and things like that too as well. So we thank them for that. Uh, Merton Band with just some musical music equipment, some donation dollars for yeah, their parents them, fundraise. Correct, it's them closing their own account and then putting that, that money with the district only for musical equipment. And um, that's just kind of how this handles putting the donation fund to your market for yeah. Merton Band. And then uh, a few other things there too as well. And then the Culver's, our last Culver's night was $420. Uh, which I do believe was a record for them too as well. So, just looking for a motion to approve the donations as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the donations as presented. 
and the total amount of $2,172.52. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor then? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. We're on personnel actions. Okay. Um, we'd like to present uh, three hires, actually. We have uh, Mr. David Wagner, who uh, the, the search team uh, consisting of uh, Sarah Kasperwitz, Mary Alonsky, myself, Carrie Nimchek, and Jay. Uh, we are recommending David Wagner to replace John Ryan. So David comes to us with about 11 years of experience from uh, the Oconomowoc School District, from DeForest, and also some time out in California too as well. So uh, a great middle school science teacher, that's where he's been and that's where his passion is. So we would, uh, we are very excited to, to, hope to recommend David to the board for approval uh, as well. And then also uh, this past week, um, after the publishing of the, uh, the, the board publication, we have two new first grade hires, which we'd like to present to the board. Uh, one is Amanda Benny, uh, Benty, and the other one is uh, Carolyn Strong. Uh, Carolyn comes to us with about eight years from the, um, uh, the Kettle Moraine School District, Dustin Elementary School, where she served in multiple roles there, uh, third, fourth, second grade teacher there. And then uh, Amanda Benty is coming to us from the Sussex Hamilton School District too. So. Uh, Amanda is a Merton grad, Arrowhead grad, uh, and uh, so we have uh, those two contracts in front of you as well. So, um, and with that though, the reason why we have a second one is we'd like to thank Jill Rummel. Jill Rummel has decided not to return with us um, as, as that, but um, and we'd like to thank her. And then another person who has resigned her position or not returned her contract is uh, Dana Urado. So Dana has decided to pursue just like Jill some other opportunities. With, uh, with whatever they, they might want to pursue with that. So we thank them and wish them the best of luck as well. Jay and I are, uh, in, along with Jonathan Juke, will be uh, interviewing next week for that choir, general music, and uh, band position too as well. So I uh, was looking for a motion to approve uh, Dave Wagner, Amanda Venti, and Carolyn Strong, their individual teacher contracts as presented. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the teaching contracts for David Wagner, uh, Amanda Venti and Carolyn Strong as presented. I'll second. Okay, we have one to the second. Are there any further questions? All in favor, then say aye. 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 All the same sign. It's carried. We're on to information. You uh, something that? Nope, nothing right now. It was a great end of the school year. Uh, nothing that you guys, nothing to fill the time here. Okay, do we have any committee reports? Not this month. Next month, we'll pick up the finance committee and then also pull the policy committee meeting too as well. Okay, reports and updates. Not even our principals nag off. Goodness, we're on the whole business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the employee handbook. Uh, the changes to that. The second reading? Second reading. Now, the last reading we brought in, in some very basic language changes and things like that. And then uh, what you also see attached in your board packet is the, uh, the would be the legal terms of the post-employment benefits uh, for our staff given the retirement benefit clip um, that uh, is going to be occurring in the next couple of years. So um, that language is all right there and it just would be inserted in section 10, post-employment benefits, in section number two. So um, other than that, uh, just looking for board approval uh, for the 15-16 employee handbook, which does kick in July 1st, which believe it or not is Wednesday. New Year's Day? Uh, New Year's, that's New Year's Day. Tomorrow, oh, yeah. New Year's Eve Day. Uh, if more than two of you show up at one time, I need to escort one of you out. <laughs> you did not post the New Year's Eve party. So, we are celebrating the fiscal year's end. There's somebody doing that. Celebrating. You guys don't seem as excited about it as we are. Celebrating <laughs> We're September 1st, but that's our new year. <laughs> that's our new year. We need a motion to approve. Yeah, motion yes. to make motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I I yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll move to approve uh, the employee 2015 2016 employee handbook as presented. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any further questions? Uh, one question is on the dates on the post employment benefits. I'm sure it's correct, but I just want to make sure that. And up above it says eligibility is as of September 1, 2016, but uh, below the contribution will be issued on September 6, 
Yep, we need to move that to 2016. Wait, hold on. Uh, the payout, we, the, the payout can be as late as September 6th. That, that's all that's saying. That's just giving us leeway to, to, to make that payout simply as late as September 6th. But September 1st, September 6th, though, 2016 number. 2016. Is that the part B? All questioning the year. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're greater than yes. Treasury 2015. Yep. Right. 2016. Okay. So with that correction? Yes. With that correction. Yep. Okay. So that it'll be 2016. All right. So your motion and your second but, uh, for that correction. Okay. Then all in favor, then say aye. Thank you. Ready? Aye. Aye. All the same sign. Motion is carried. Okay. And we are on to the uh, new business of district property insurance. Okay. Mike, I'm going to turn this over to you. Yep. So we, uh, we went out to bid for our property insurance when we found out that uh, the LGPIF would, would no longer be funded uh, through our state budget. And as we kind of thought early on in the process, our LGPIF bid came back very high. Um, our insurance rep from M3 uses us as an example for how high the bids can go. Uh, so a 283% increase was a little high. Uh, so we went out to bid, um, we got three other bids uh, from EMC, Chubbs and Liberty Mutual, and EMC came in uh, the lowest, uh, surprisingly, uh, really from the range that we'd like to see. There's still an increase, but the majority of that increase was due to our property being re, uh, revalued uh, last year. So we had, in previous years, um, we had a property valuation of nearly 28 million, and LGPIF really hadn't done a reval in many years. And so that, that rebound came in last year through CBIS and valued our property at nearly 50, 48 million or 44 million on, on uh, the buildings and maybe another six or, or nine, somewhere in that range for, for our um, other properties within and, and outdoor properties as well. So uh, anyway, with, with those bids coming in, um, EMC came in the lowest of all four bids um, by a couple Initially, by about four or five thousand dollars below Liberty, as you can see on there. Um, the only piece that was um, that I discussed with, with M3 was the flood insurance. The flood insurance in this uh, new property insurance is only at one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I say only because Algen PIF had um, insured us up to one point five million. Now. The board can decide if you want to increase that, if the increments would be $1 million or $2 million. So $150,000 is kind of baked in to the property insurance quote. Um, you can jump to a million for what we believe will be an additional $2,600 a year, or $2 million for, I believe it was 44, 4,800, it's all an estimate right now. Um, just to put in some context, I know I was talking to John uh, about if we ever had really any claims due to, you know, flooding, um, and, and the only thing you could think about was the gym floor, um, when that had gotten, was it after a rain, or yeah. after, after a rain, the floor had warped, and that ended up costing us, I believe it was like a $130,000 claim. So just having the floor warp from, from rain was $130,000. Proposition for us that, that our insurance covers, so that's already getting real close to that 150 threshold. That I would recommend just increasing that to a million dollars, just to kind of be safe. I mean, if we didn't have that, and something did happen, I would feel horrendous. Um, so, so having a million dollars, there is the two million dollar option, but that might be, you know, beyond really what what our exposure is um, to to flood possibilities. So really, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a recommendation to, I'm looking for two recommendations. One would be to withdraw from LGPIF. Um, that would have to be one, one motion. Once that motion is made, Randy kind of signs this form that I fax into LGPIF tomorrow, say we're dropping coverage with you, and then a second motion um, to, to take on EMC. And, and, and one more note, 
Uh, EMC is currently our, our workman's comp um, claims people that we sent through and our workman's comp. They've been great to work with and haven't heard anything but, but great things about EMC. And they're closely connected with M3, which, which I like as well. Um, and they're big game in most. So um, there are districts all over the place that have EMC for their district property. So then there'd be a second motion to take on EMC, and I would just need a, maybe just a recommendation to say, yes, let's go with a million dollars of flood insurance versus the $150,000. Sorry, one more note. You'll also notice that on the bottom line of the property, we actually get more um, insurance coverage with EMC than the other three companies, um, Chubbs and Liberty, and we even have LGPF coming at about $50 million. They, they go on the lower side, especially of, uh, I don't know what it is. They go on the low side of not the property value itself, but the, um, the uh, business personal property. EMC kicks that up to about 8.8 .8 million versus the 5.4 million at the other three companies. So they actually come out $3 million ahead in overall coverage and a lower quote. So, yay for EMC. Let's uh, do the motion for the LGPIA first, and, uh, and then get the other motion on the floor, and then we can discuss the other alternatives. I'll make a motion to withdraw coverage from the local government property insurance fund effective July 30 or July 1st, 2015. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a <coughs> second. All in favor, then say aye. Uh -huh. All same sign, motion is carried. And the second motion? I make a motion to approve EMC insurance as Merck Community School District's property insurance provider with the premium not to exceed $30,000, effective July 1st, 2015. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, what is our uh, deductible, like on the flood? Uh, I believe it's right here at $5,000. I think that covers most of uh, the top pieces here for property coverage with flood. So it's $5,000. So we have $5,000 exposure, um, no matter which uh, limits are there. Well, Liberty, Liberty uh, has a $2,500 exposure, so half. And uh, they, it looks like they have, uh, let's see, they have a water damage and sewer backup. Oh, there's the flood, and they have a million dollars of flood as well. Oh, but the flood deductible, oh, I'm sorry. So the flood deductible, if you look at the very bottom line, the flood deductible for EMC yeah. is $25,000. $25,000. And same as the same for Liberty. Chubb does not offer flood insurance? Chubb has a part of a, um, I believe this is, uh, let's see, included. I thought there was a basket somewhere with their um, insurance. What else, John, do you think uh, could be damaged if we had a lot of water? You get into uh, drywall, station, um, ceiling tiles, you know, carpet replacements. Anytime you start to get into those types of exposures. Yeah, you know, I understand that. I'm, I'm just trying to understand this building and what we would have. Do we have any real risk areas? The risk areas. The only risk area in this building, obviously, we have the wood floor because that's very close to water levels. But over here, if you got into fifth grade area, that's a little bit lower. Um, you'd have some carpet there, carpet and a little bit of drywall, uh, depending on how much water entered the building. Uh, but we've only got about five rooms would be exposure to it, More, or six actually, that would encompass the shell of the building over here in the seventh floor. When it flooded previously and got the, the floor, what uh, 
Was there anything extraordinary? I mean, was the, the rain just absolutely like hundred year flood type yeah, stuff? Yeah, it was one of those where we got that seven inches of rain within three And we've changed those. Mm -hmm. It came underneath the doors on the north side. And mm -hmm. that's where water came. And we've changed those doors since. We've changed those doors since. I'm just wondering if, if we're overkill on the flood. I know I'm a million. Is there any exposure out in the shed for flood damage? If there's going to be a backup, yeah, then there's, there's exposure. Yeah, and the sewer backup is separate from, from right. flood damage. Right, and yeah. any water coming in through the, the roof, that wouldn't be flood damage, would it? I would say that's flood damage. No, I mean, I don't know how many sure it looks at, but I, I think water damage. I, I don't think that would be a flood damage. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, you know, 100. way back when we had our late Merton, right. uh, we had, that was the, our water issue, but I think we've gotten that pretty well solved. Are we going to have, you know, I just wonder if it's worth What's the difference what? in price, Mike? You know, about twenty six hundred a year to go to a million. Anything about that? Uh, I mean, and, and it's actually one hundred and seventy five thousand exposure because you got to add the, the deductible in there. Right, paying the deductible. Right. So it'd be one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars worth of damage. I'm just wondering. How we could wrap that up. Outside of the floor, when you start bringing in restoration companies for re remediation and all that stuff on, you know, with the idea of mold and things. Yep. Um, yeah, the only school, like primary school, it would be more, more so in the, the, the east wing, is where we possibly have some flood damage there. Um, Do you rack up any substantial dollars in? Furniture and books and all the other stuff that would get damaged if water was coming out. No, because we've got all steel and plastic. A couple of inches. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you wouldn't. Nothing substantial. It'd be different if we were in a floodplain. It would. It would be, yeah. I, I just. <clears throat> it's insurance. So it's insurance. Whatever you guys want to get. Yeah, it's, it's insurance. It doesn't make you feel better if we would have a flood type of situation. Like, like we were close to it mm -hmm. um, about two years ago when we almost had, I mean, we didn't have any issues in the, in the intermediate school, nor did we have issues before, but we had water up to the sidewalk around the primary school. Yeah, yeah that water was getting high. And it was coming. And that was one of those seven inches of rain in three hours scenarios. Yep. But we didn't have any water damage. Yeah, so we had it once already this summer where the retention pond filled with water. Once the retention pond fills with water, everything else gets backed up. So but we're still okay back there. Do you know offhand like the same what thing. our floodplain is for our property? Yeah. I would assume we're at, at least 100. I mean, I'm across the street. What's that rainbow in there? But, the, you know, they designate 25 year floodplain, 100 year floodplain. Basically, how often you can expect to be flooded. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily help true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's an integration at least. Right, true. true. Although, I guess we have people here with enough history that. You know, we're at least not in a 20 year floodplain or anything. We have, we have 50 million dollars worth of property. And would a flood possibly damage 1 million of it? Could. And anything's possible. Is it sure? I was actually curious about that number. How, how did we go from 28 million to 44 million? Because LGBT has been cut valuations low for a long time. It keeps rates up. And it was kind of irresponsible because if we would lose both buildings, we wanted to recover our total valuation. But what, under what scenario would we lose both buildings? And charge a tornado. Tornado could take, could. That'd be about the only idea. And, 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 and,
if you want to go down that, that route, you don't have to. EMC, we, we would go with EMC. The current valuation, they would go with LGPS valuation of 28 million. And they would send somebody out to then revalue this year. And you could slowly kick it up over two years. So for example, if they come and revalue, EMC sends their people out, it's 50 million, just like we, we think it is. You can slowly kick up that valuation over the next couple of years. I simply told EMC it's worth 50 million, let's ensure 50 million right off the bat. But we certainly could step it up to keep rates lower for a couple of years, but it's eventually, they're going to eventually want to kick us up to 50 million regardless. But you could step it. Yeah. Even at $200 a square foot, which would be a very high number, we don't get to 50, 50 million. That's 40 million. At 200,000 square feet. Or four, it's 44 million is what they value it at. 44 and then 8, 8.8 in property. And I, don't know, I, I, would, I would think we would be able to replace this type of facility for 150 a square foot. Well, I mean, we can't set our valuations. It's whatever they come out and tell us it is. So, I mean, that would be the greatest, that, that's where you could gain the greatest reduction in your premium. Correct, is the property that is correct. So they would value it, but... I, I mean, the, LGPIF had a, had a right. third party come out last year, see this, and that's what they valued it at, at about 44. Um, and, uh, and building value, correct. So they I forgot what the square footage was. Like the, with all the equipment we've got, we've got boilers, we've got... Well, we're probably, I mean, do we have 8.8 .8 in personal property? I don't know about that. That's just yeah, an that EMC. That area. That's just an EMC number that they put in. They put it in at 20% or whatever it is of the property valuation. Um, so 44 million to replace these two buildings. To see, to see this is number from last, last, uh, last but EMC would probably sell their own people again. And we can always see what they say, and then obviously that's the number one reducer in property. Well, right, it could be, be, be less, or, right. or we could say go with the LGPIF numbers and make you send those people out, and we'll step it up over time. Again, they're not going to let us step it up forever. You can't do a 10 year step. But you know, they might say, we'll go 50%, 50% over these <coughs> two years. Because you're right, the likelihood of the tornado breaking out is too you know, probably in August will happen. Yeah, and the bigger fire or tornado. Yeah, that's the most right, likely. Right. To, but that, that, you know, that's like with any insurance, though. Life insurance. I mean, you know, anything. Well, fire only be one of them. And would likely only be one of them, exactly. So if they're not valuing the building separately and you had a valuation of 30 million and one of them were destroyed, you'd be fine. 30 million would be fine if you covered the replacement. Astrofit? Well, <laughs> big asteroid. <laughs> I think we got bigger issues. So, what are you guys thinking? thinking? So, we have a motion on the table for EMC with a million dollar. Well, well the motion the million dollars not to exceed 30,000. Oh, not to exceed 30,000. That's with 2,600. Oh, and uh, an additional, and I just played it up a little bit just in case it came in above 2600 to go So we're not, we're not locked into anything uh, we can direct him. Correct. Uh, right, if we want to go on a slower step scale, it was, it was certainly still coming up to 30 if he wants. The other question I had was the business income and which I don't think our business income is at risk. Um, what, what that is, is <laughs> what would come, no. <laughs> but, but the extra expenses, if, if this building is wiped out, what right. would the cost yeah. to bring in by traders? Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. So it was five hundred with LGPIF. I think that would be, I, I was told to them that that was overkill. And really, they've never seen a claim over a million dollars to have mobile homes brought in to, to teach students. So. They thought a million dollars was fine. 
I saw that BI actually, I'm sorry, Liberty actually had the, uh, the 100,000 coverage for business income. And I'm guessing their they're rate would go down if they didn't offer well, that. Well, the thing is with business income, we're, we're not a profit. I mean, we're still going to bring in our tax revenue. Right, so that's what I said. Our income is not at risk. Right, it's not even a problem. Other than when the legislature meets. <laughs> What, so how do we want to direct him? I would probably lean toward uh, lowering the uh, property. Uh, I would as well. Okay. Everybody agree to on that? And uh, I understand um, the flood insurance, that's $2,600. So. And, and the $2,600, we have right now insurance for equipment breakdown. That's a separate entity with LGPIF. That's about $2,600. EMC includes equipment breakdown in their quote. So I would be crossing out equipment breakdown in the budget for $2,600 and simply replacing it with additional flood insurance if that makes you feel any better about spending the additional. It'd be a wash to, to the Budget, budgetary um, wash uh, because of the breakdowns included. What kind of equipment do they cover? Um, I think it's a lot of it is um, like HVAC system. The, uh, no, I, I don't know if it's within the building, but, but a lot of outside stuff. We're talking um, Tractor, yeah, yeah. Well, not not each other, but classroom equipment and things like that. The, the tractors that are outside, um, uh, anything that's not structural. Well, I, don't know, I don't know if we should actually be structural, structural or not. I know. We save a lot of money. For how much? That's something else to fix it too. Um, I was just wondering if uh, they would quote you a price for. Uh, Half of the with flood insurance. I was told the steps are 150, 1 million, 2 million. Mm -hmm. I can certainly ask. They'll give you half a million, but it'll cost the same as a million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's actually higher because we don't have that step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's nothing else that uh, you're wondering. A couple more questions. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm no expert. I can certainly go to, to people to find out if you need that. Yeah, well, I mean, if, there, if, if it's included or it has a dollar value attached to it, maybe it also has a premium attached to it. And if it doesn't make sense, you know, why would we want to spend our money there? You can cross um, out some pieces. Right. Okay. Um, accounts okay. receivable. Yeah. Why would you have coverage for accounts receivable? Uh, I believe we're talking about, um, I, I think this is, I don't want to say it's theft, because that's a separate piece, um, but I'm um, trying to recall what we said. If, um, let me think of an example. We can move on to the next question, let me think of an example of what you're going on to your next question. And, and then the other one would be like the arson reward. You want you want a new twenty five thousand dollar reward if uh, someone has information. Does is the insu insurance does the insurance cover the building regardless of whether we offer an award? Yes, of course. So what do we care if the person does that? Probably lower its premium. I mean lower it if it's in there. If it's in there. It could it might if, if it, it does, does then keep it. it. <laughs> yeah, I that was applicable to this district at one time. No, they, they did burn down the building, the bird school. But there was, obviously there was no reward at that time. The Lake Pie Schoolhouse was burned in the morning of uh, a bit. Right, I'm, I'm thinking that $200 was going to be receivable. Wow. So maybe it's high, is cash, coin, checks <laughs> that are in the business office at the time of, let's, you know, I don't know, let's say, let's say, in mid January, you know, we've got, you know, I've got my tax, tax recovery, you know, tax receipts.
receipts and tax checks in the, in the business office, locked up, ready to go, and come through and wipe things out. I, I don't know, but that might be an example. Here's not that, I, but I suppose why wouldn't they write a new check? Yeah, I have new, I don't know anything about this. I just Googled it. <laughs> oh, here we go. Whether it's accurate or not, but it is from RMI and there's an owl on it, so it's got to be smart. Um, insures against loss of sums owed to the insurer by its customers that are uncollectible because of the damage by the insured pearl, pearl to accounts receivable records. So are you unable to collect debts, collect debts because of what occurred? Right, and that's one, again, that I don't see that one. Like very scrappy, I think we could. Yeah. <laughs> who owes us money? That's me. Where does that money come from? It's tax dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people what they're saying, an old man enrolled in school goes bankrupt, and they're still fucking enrolling kids here. That's through the state of Wisconsin. The state, the state of Wisconsin, of Wisconsin outside of students with special needs, facilitates a whole enrollment dollars. You have to, we can't collect the dollars because of the damage that happened to the property. Correct. Not, they can't yeah. have it to And I know we're discussing these pieces, but these literally have to like dollars that we're talking oh, yeah. about on the entire it, it may be. Uh, I gotta imagine the arsenal for this Indian sense. <laughs> but I can certainly look into those two if we can I mean we can cancel whatever we can cancel. Um, but I, I would prefer I guess I talked about it with M3 to see if that's possible. Do we have though an idea for Is there any, John, is there anything outside, like we just redid the, you know, the sewer for the, you know, the, the, the pipe, uh, you know, out front here, and, you know, historically there have been problems in the back, and, you know, with flooding. Is there anything that, you know, we'd have to, you know, we'd have problems that would damage anything that would have to, you know, redo grading or any sort of exterior stuff that would add up to something substantial? The sidewalks, asphalt. But you still have that twenty-five thousand dollar deductible. Yeah. That uh, first five thousand dollars. Because you can do a lot of that kind of stuff for twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. Not you got to rip it out. Rip out uh, asphalt. Because I don't know if wood water would be that many. I think wood water gets underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad there isn't some intermediary step. Do that. Um, go ahead. Well, John, what do you think? 150 will replace the gym floor. Yeah. In, in my honest thing, I would I would go with the one million dollars. Just from what I've heard, other schools talk about problems that they've had and it just doesn't take one day at all. Do you have any samples? Hmm? Do you have any samples? Uh, just one little sample for air conditioning unit. That's it. Like the basement area? Or the mechanics? Yeah, it's in space. But none other than for that air conditioning So we don't have any more reasons that on that for the wire level. I'm okay with a million coverage. I'm assuming you're going to save more than $2,500 from the change for that. Yes, I just actually changed uh, change, uh, change value. So the initial, uh, you see initially came at 18000 value coming in at 28 million. So we'd probably be around there until the step up occurs. Which that would almost get us back to where we were even with the additional. Yeah, I would probably go with the million for twelve. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor then? Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried.
that have that we've reached out to. One is Sprung, right down the corner, right down the road here, and the other one is another uh, company in Southeast Wisconsin, JM Brennan, uh, who you have a relationship with, who does uh, do some work for us. And then uh, service specialist, obviously, uh, also put a big pro big, big package together. And uh, you can see that out of the three bids, uh, service specialists did come in at the lowest at $78,333. Uh, and then uh, the other two uh, were, were a little bit more. One was a lot more, and the other one was a little bit more uh, in that, too. So um, it is part of our facility improvement plan to replace all of those uh, before they break and uh, to kind of stay on top of it. Obviously, what uh, Batty is doing is will also obviously tie in directly to that, but uh, replacing them with uh, more efficient. We'll be continuing to work with Focus on Energy to get those rebates back to it as well. So that 78000 will be lowered uh, based on what qualifies for energy exemptions too as well. So um, it is the administrator's recommendation to uh, move forward service specialists to replace the uh, seven remaining RTUs not to exceed $78,333. This is already in the budget. And how much is the budget? 80. 80. 80. But technically, we can't do this because it's not on the agenda. No, it was posted accordingly. It's just not in your board packet. It was listed as a possible action item. Right? Uh, and the posting also. in the post yeah. so it, our agenda is really our agenda correct they were printed early yeah okay the packets were yep okay so it was posted yeah okay and that's okay with me uh we should have when we did the, the agenda that we had in front of us amended that, amended that. the agenda to reflect that was changed Post-its. But since it was posted, I don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Future reference, we probably should have yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't double check that. So, what's the board's pleasure? I'll make a motion to approve service specialists to replace the remaining seven rooftop units on the primary school not to exceed the amount of $78,333. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. So that's, uh, that's not one of the items that you're, that this is for the new budget. Correct. So that's not one of those. Yeah, and, and the reason why, we, it is in the budget instead of waiting for the fall. Right. Uh, just do it when we don't have kids and get yeah, them done. So, and as part of the bid, bid spec is, is they have the work done prior to August 20th, I think it was. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Prior My to hope is the month of July. You get it squeezed in there. Before uh, summer school finishes over. Have you worked with these guys before, John, or do you know of them? The service specialist? Yeah, yeah they've, they've done the last two rounds. Yeah, the last two rounds they've done. They've been wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, do they, I mean, they consistently beat everybody. Are they cutting corners? They're putting on new gas regulators. And we watch them real close, and so do the inspectors. And if they do try to cut any corners, they're not getting away with what they need to do. Actually, the credit isn't that much different. No, they're not. They're not. Right. They're not. <coughs> so most of them are not. And Brian is a much larger organization, right? They have more He asked me to be over this. That's why, yeah. And that's why I had to. That'd be nice to see them. Right? Yeah, It'd be nice to see if they got the business, yeah. but we can't pay them sixteen thousand dollars more for the same car. How old are the, these units that are being replaced? Ninety six. So these seven that are up, they're still ninety six. Those are still ninety six units, yeah. So we'll have three units left up there that will be dated. 2002. Those will be the as an easy section. Yeah, one's over the business office, and the other two are over the new addition. Okay. 
Any other questions? Then all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same sign. Motion approved. Uh, gymnasium product? Sure. Um, just an update. We'd like to, uh, and this will be, I'd like to put this on the board for, for an action item for next, um, for, for the July board meeting so we can uh, secure the vendors and secure the contractors as well. And um, as, as we've been speaking about for, for quite some time, the total project in itself is about $104,000. So far, uh, we've got 35, and the month, the early month of July is the big, we're going to do is be going out and, and soliciting corporate sponsorships. And uh, the one thing I'd like to uh, kind of have a conversation about right now is the types of businesses to go out and solicit. And, and ask. Uh, and we did talk a little bit about this when we put our, uh, our our policy together, when we talk about accepting donations, and, and, and it was the endorsement of what would be maybe, maybe alcohol or gaming or anything else like that. I guess we've got an awful lot of people we're able to reach out to who are not in, say, the food business. Um, kind of bring up with the, this is an Applebee's conversation, on the rocks, enders, some local businesses that do serve, serve alcohol. Um, but they, they're, they're in the community and they're obviously part of the business structure. Um, is, is those types of businesses something that you would like me to pursue uh, possible sponsorships with? On the rocks, it's a bar and grill, Applebee's, Enders, those types of restaurants all the way from uh, Throwing any Lowe's, for instance, who, you know, they just happen to serve alcohol there at some of those establishments. I ask you a question. Uh, I see some of the, the uh, advertisers around Arrowhead, but Arrowhead doesn't have anything that, do they have anything that goes with establishing that have alcohol? I have, I have not seen an establishment, I have not seen like Enders, for instance. Um, or an Applebee's or any type of banner uh, supporting, you know, so and so is a proud supporter of athletics if they're serving alcohol. I haven't seen that. I don't think I'd want it. Arrowhead's not going to do it. I don't think I would recommend us to it. Yeah, I, regardless of what Arrowhead does, I mean, that's a little bit of a different. Uh, you know, clientele or whatever for the advertising, but I would agree that we should not have people that or have advertisements from organizations that serve alcohol. I don't know. I, I think some of the restaurants, you know, you think Applebee's, you don't think about booze right away. At least, you know, families go there and eat and the kids eat there, and I don't see anything wrong with Applebee's or Enders. Um, on the rocks, the name just sounds like it's an alcoholic, alcohol establishment. So I don't think that would be appropriate. But the other ones I don't have an issue with. Okay. There's a really hard, there's a very fuzzy line between what's a restaurant with a bar and what's a bar that serves food and what's just a restaurant. How do we justify you know, by taking that name yeah, when their business may not be their business model may not be anything different than the other ones. I would recommend that the board give a direction that is consistent, so you, you it's, it's very clear uh, which, which, which direction you would. And I bring it up because we have been approached by some, some organizations. And we said, hey, hold on for a second, we will, and then be bringing this up and before we get too far down the road. Because we had the beginning parts of the conversation we put the policy in place. Um, it didn't prohibit it. Uh, it gave the board the opportunity to say yes or no to to a possibility of an establishment like that. What if like Fox Brothers or Sendix were willing to give us money? They're they grocery store. Or PQ. Or PQ. Yeah. That, that's where you, you know, if it is it, it, it that's, that's a very, very good point. Those are, those are grocery stores that you see all over the place. And that they are supporters of Arrowhead, and they, they, they support by giving to the booster clubs, and you know you see they probably sell a lot more alcohol than on the rock sets. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Right, so they, they sell it, they don't serve it. Yeah, you, yeah. you go to On the Rocks or Applebee's or whatever, and you consume alcohol there, as opposed to you right. can purchase alcohol from this place. My so question is, a little bit. it's another. It's, it's a little kind of different, but it, it is still a, a little fun. So, I, I personally wouldn't be opposed to it, either way, whether it's grocery stores or, or restaurants that serve alcohol. What you could do to make for sure that it wasn't just purely a bar, is maybe define the percentage of their sales from from food from food versus beverage, which actually affects how they're treated as well. I think that that's something that can work in my So you could say that it, you know at least seventy percent of their sales need to come from food to be able to eighty. I think that's a good idea. I, I find uh, Applebee's. I just think of it as a restaurant. I don't think a lot of people are going to the name Applebee's and think, oh, drinking right away. You can go to college in a town with an Applebee's, did you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm thinking of that. I mean, we didn't college, we didn't like, hey, we're in the Applebee's. Yeah. Oh, wait, I you know, like, Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, exactly. Is it, is it, exactly. is it, is it, it a more restaurant? Yeah, but that's a, a bar and they have wings. I mean, but I'd say on the rocks is more of a bar than a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the pizza's really good, but, you know, how, it is more of a... I know, but we, uh, we are, how are we defining, just as a group of us board members, defining what their business is? Yeah, I mean, what, what, how do we just, how do we... Who or why, how do we define it? In, in one thing I can do is, is maybe this is a bigger discussion that I want you guys to think about. And, and, and so I, uh, right now I'm just going to pause and, and not pursue places that, that, that serve. I, mean, you can, I think grocery stores is a totally different category than someone where you can go and be served. I mean, Phil, that's your point. Um, I, I, but I would like to have a, a formal conversation. Cause we, I don't need to pursue those, but I know like Kathy James has been you know, said, hey, we'd be, we'd be interested in, in doing, and obviously the, in return, we because obviously it could be a banner or, or just the name or whatever it is, uh, you would be able to control what exactly goes on there as well, about what that advertisement looks like. Um, and to your point, on the rocks, their logo kind of looks like something that we probably, that I know I wouldn't want in, in a I primary like school gym. Fishbowl. No. But the, the Applebee's logo, you know, is, I don't even, can't even think about that. But a lot of things are, it other, puts you in a different category. The other uh, uh, possible point to look at or that might come up is places that sell firearms. I don't, I mean, because oftentimes those are both, you know, sporting, you know, places like Cabela's or, you know, mm -hmm. those kinds of places that will sell firearms as well. That might be another one that. Pursue Pawan. <laughs> I didn't say gambling. Didn't say gambling. Didn't do that part. So I'll you exclude. They do like the I mean, something to think about at least. I mean, I, I'm, I'm admittedly weird and not, well, I not really a fan of firearms personally. Uh, but I, I understand they have their uses. <laughs> so we'll, we'll have a deeper conversation, and we'll include Jenny in on that too uh, next time about, about that. Um, one of the things that I did also want to bring to the board is, is the idea that we do have, said we have set aside $50,000 in this budget uh, to complete that. Now, and we do know that um, for an additional 30, and now our, our hope is to, at a minimum, raise another twenty thousand dollars, and we feel very strongly that we're going to be able to do that. Uh, really do. Um, that's our hope, at least. So that's why we've said fifty to kind of complete the project from the district side of things. Um, in July, we would like the board to think about: is, is do we just want to do the one hundred four thousand dollar project, or would we like to do the one hundred thirty four thousand dollar project? Because what I would like the board to do in July is also um, approve. We are collecting bids 
for bleachers, for clicking bids for floors and mechanicals. Those are really the three big ones uh, that, uh, that, we, that we need to take a look at uh, to be able to complete the project. Uh, things Because once we approve the project from the board level, that means it's got the financial commitment of the district. Uh, we can then secure the time frames and start people, having people work on that uh, when they can begin that in their part in their business too as well. So, because we would like the project to get going, uh, the floor people, if the floor people can get in there right away after Labor Day, um, well, that that floor will be ready to be used because the steps of the project would be obviously the mechanicals would be in August. We can do an awful lot of work before the floor goes in. We would do the majority of the work, whether it's the curtain, moving the hoops, um, the bleachers come in after the floor, but. Um, a lot of the heavy work too can also be done before that floor goes in. So, um, just looking for that from, from the board if that's something that the board would like to. So, think about obviously some sponsorships, and then ultimately, if we wanted to um, add thirty thousand dollars to the project to make the court look like wood, if that's something that the board would like to do. And we'll talk to the finance committee about some of those options too as well uh, that we can bring to the to the entire board to see if people want to. Um, on the, the floor, it doesn't, the wood look doesn't make the floor any better, right? All it is, it's a step. It's a step. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. It's a step. So, um, then the second question is, would, uh, if that was desirable to us, and desirable to the groups that are using it, um, you know, kind of hang that out as another piece and and say uh, if we could get matching funds to pay for that, you know, uh, if we jumped up fifteen thousand to match uh, contributors to get that. Uh, MAA is going to be doing that in the end of July. I, I went to their June meeting, and uh, um, we'll be they're, they're making a decision. I'm working with their MAA president as well. So um, we'll cross our fingers because they they've got all sorts of creative ways because they they understand that they're the primary users of it, and that they want to show their appreciation from that. So uh, they'll be finalizing that in July. Yeah, I guess I, I kind of agree I'm a little bit hesitant on spending another thirty thousand dollars just for the sake of spending it. Right. <laughs> but, um, but you know, I trying to picture like what it's gonna look like, it will look I personally think a lot better with the lighter colored, you know, wood floor as opposed to the blue just as a giant sea of you know blue floor. Um, That's what I was thinking. Um, and it's gonna be there for a long time, so if we get to that point, it could be a partnership. Yeah, no, that's okay. Both of these are life floors. They're considered life floors to life of the building. Uh, very low maintenance mm -hmm. every 10 to 15 years. Some, some really light stuff. So, okay. So just some things to think about. We'll have to discuss. Are, are we thinking of any other kinds of fundraisers for it? Um, we have, well, right, because what we would probably like to do is the next year's, we have a, we set a fall bash uh, out at Ironwood again, and we also have secured uh, another, we'll secure date for trivia night, and we may just take those funds to offset uh, this project, depending on what we can do for some private donations too as well. Uh, we've had really good luck. Hopefully, MAA uh, will will come through for us too as well. But um, they've been. We've had some really good results with the uh, the artwork, and I'm not quite sure what the total on that was. A little over ten thousand. A little over ten thousand. Yeah. Right. Just for the artwork, uh, the metal artwork and things like that. So it, we we have approximately thirty five, but we'll Mike will be making sure that we've got everything all taken care of that, and we'll bring that to the board too in July as well. Okay. Then we're here to future meetings and agenda items. So we have an early meeting next month. Thank you for moving that up a little bit. 
and then we've got our 31st, and then we've got the annual meeting. Believe it or not, I don't know. Need the agenda. The agenda. Okay, I think we have a motion to adjourn. Motion and second. All in favor, then say aye. Aye. All say sign. Motion is carried. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Um, so the contract is We signed. have a few things to sign. Yes, we do. Bill, you are dismissed. Um, you have the, uh,